Um, I'd like to call to order the August 10th, 2011 Planning Commission meeting. Let the record show that all commissions are present. Uh, moving along to our Mr. pool. Chairman. Mr. Pluot. Thank you. This has been a very interesting four weeks for myself and Commissioner Sadley. Last week, I mean last meeting, uh, some things were put in the minutes. Uh, and Commissioner Sadler and I has not responded to that. In, we have now, and at this point in time, I would like to give this to the Secretary and enter these documents into the minutes of this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Moving along to item three, approval or denial of the uh, August 10th, 2011 proposed agenda. Before we vote on that, Mr. Quintmall, you, you wanted to uh, address the commi uh, commission on an agenda item? Yes, I did. Um, I would like to request the Planning Commission uh, to pull item 6A for the Forrest L. Dixon estate due to concerns of ethical issues that and letters that I've received from the family members. Um, we decided it's just uh, a good idea to pull it because of those concerns. All right, so. If I could have my, my comments added into the minutes, please. Thank you. All right, thank you. So we'll have an amended agenda uh, removing item 6A, the Forest Hill Dixon Estate, lots X-1, Y, Z, and 6A. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Motion. Second. I have a motion by Milton Kluot, seconded by Bob Nance, to uh, accept the amended agenda. Any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. This time we'll open up the, uh, or we'll uh, approval or denial of the minutes of the July 13, 2011 Planning Commission meeting. Motion. Second. A motion by Milton Kluot, seconded by Dan Sadley, to approve the minutes. The July 13, 2011 Planning Commission meeting. Any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. Item 5, the public comment period. At this time, anyone wishing to come up and address the Commission on any items relating to the Planning Commission, please come up and sign in with the Secretary and you will get your three minutes to speak. No one wishing to address the Commission. The initial public comment period is closed. Item 6, public hearing to approve or deny the following family partitions. Uh, 6B, the Mark E. Wagaspak property, lots B-6-A and B-6-B. Good evening. Again, Clint Quintmall, W.J. Quintmall Surveyors. Asking for Planning Commission approval on the Mark E. Wagaspak family partition of lot B-6 into B-6A and B-6B. Comments or questions from commissioners? There are no comments or questions from commissioners at this time. We'll open up the public hearing. Anyone wishing to come up and address the commission on this item, please come up, sign in with the secretary, and you will get your three minutes to speak. No one wishing to address the commission. The public comment period on this item is closed. Comments or questions from commissioners? You know, staff um, recommends to uh, Mr. 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 Please, please be recognized first. I'd like to. All right. Uh, staff recommends that you either reduce the uh, servitude of passage to 20 feet or provide the uh, turnaround. Is there any reason why you don't want to reduce it to 20 feet so you don't have to uh, comply with the uh, turnaround? Well, uh, we have adequate area for further subdivision under the family partition guidelines, and so therefore, um, we don't want to limit uh, the sales to a 20 foot. Um, same reason as previously, previous months of where building a road you know, in the center of a 20 foot and then expanding to get the 30 at some later date would just cause to offset the road in the center of, a, of a, what should be a proposed 30 foot. Um, so that's why we're asking for the variance for the T turn. Yeah, but you also have adequate land for, for the uh, T turn around, and certainly the piece of property doesn't have any, any uniqueness to the shape of it. It's a it's a perfect rectangle. What what would be the point of putting a T turn that that is sitting by the first mobile home when you possibly divide the property further 
and then therefore having two T turnarounds or whatever be the whatever be the case. I don't quite understand. Well, I, you know, the, the driveway is the driveway. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, there's no reason why you can't take that survey to the passage and actually shape it into, into a form so that you can provide for adequate turnaround. I mean, it could be an L shape. It doesn't have to be a perfect T, but it could be an L shape. Um, you, you know, you have the real estate to comply with the code. There's really no basis for the, for the variance. In your opinion, there's no basis. In my opinion, there is basis. And I'm asking commission for a variance. Well, I mean, you know, based on the on the justification, it says the unique shape of the property. You know, it's it's not unique; it's a perfect rectangle, and um, uh, and you've got you know you've got the frontage on Terry Road, and you can see, and you've got adequate space to provide the T. So I don't understand how how you know you, how this makes sense. I mean, it makes sense to me. I don't know how it don't make sense to you, but I think we have a difference of opinion on what's required and what's not. Okay, fair enough. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dolphin. Um, with regards to the T turnaround, mm -hmm. um, I noticed that in the <clears throat> letter here, uh, I assume this is signed by Marquis Wagsback, though there's no signature. This person says we are happy to answer any questions. I'd be interested to know what uh, Mark Wagsback has to say about the T turnaround. Is right. this your idea of not having a T turnaround, or is it the landowners? It is the landowners, and they are here if you would like to speak with them. I would like to just know what, they, what the basis for this request is. Good evening, gentlemen. Eric Wagonsback, Mark Wagonsback's son. I currently reside on a piece of property, the second trailer in the back. I will be the one that will be purchasing the back piece uh, if the division goes through. Uh, basically, right now, nothing's going to change with the use of the property as it is. My sister lives on the front piece. I live on the back piece. Uh, my trailer is a double wide that I put there after Katrina, and it's not going to be moved. $75,000 trailer on a piece of concrete. So. There's no need for a turnaround. Me and my sister are still going to be the ones living there, and we're just requesting that we don't need it. So you're not saying that it's unique. You're just saying you don't you don't feel like you need it. No, I mean we don't. It, my that driveway ends at my property. Nobody goes down there to turn around. Needs to turn around. Okay. Well, I just wanted to find out whether it was yours or the surveyor's idea that. No, I mean, I want to keep everything the way it is, which is my driveway's built. The two pieces of the two trailers that are on it now are going to stay there. So it would be to my benefit to be able to keep everything like it is, not to have to start redoing driveways and trying to make turnarounds that we don't need when it's family property. It's going to stay family property, staying in the family. And it would be a whole lot easier on us just to be able to put the property line there and be done. Thank which you. Is what we're asking for. Mr. Nance. Thank you. Uh, I, ha I have a question of the applicant. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, are you? Aren't you a volunteer fire, firefighter? Yes, I am. Uh, you, you don't. You, you don't think that the T turnaround would help in case you're. No, it, we have plenty of room. Um, in fact, since you brought that up, we did have a medical emergency at my house several years ago. Now, when uh, since I've moved there, the ambulance had plenty of room to get in, turn around in my uh, tra uh, sister's driveway, and get out with no problems at all. Plenty mm -hmm. of room. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Clue. Uh, Mr. Wag uh, Mr. Wag back. could you come back up, please? Yes, sir. Being you, being you are a firefighter, mm -hmm. a lot of this time the excuse of, of uh, been given to for the T turnaround not given it is a fire truck and stuff. Can you, as a firefighter, give this board your uh, findings or your recommendations or your study if you did it or anything as I've far as a T turn around with a fire truck and everything I've never been involved in any studies involving that never uh, never been I've actually I've been out of the actual fire fighting service for a while been on the business side of it and uh, recently gotten out of it also but I've never been involved in any studies it's mm -hmm. just in my opinion and from calls that I've been on and you've got plenty of room in my driveway if you need to turn around and the second trailer that's there now is not even far enough away from the road that a truck would go down there in the first place why you why you were a firefighter has that ever been a problem has that ever come up uh not being able to turn around yes 
in driveways, yes, but in my opinion, on this piece of property, we wouldn't take the truck off the road anyway. The truck's okay. not going to come off the road. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? If not, what's the wish of the commission? I move to approve uh, with the granting the variance of no T turnaround and also the variance of a 30 foot servitude. I have a motion to I approve. I second that, but it, Mr. Uh, from, from 40 to 30, uh, Commissioner right. Nance, or right. from or from uh, 40 to 20? No, from 40 to 30. Okay. I second that motion. I have a motion to approve uh, this family partition with the variances by uh, Bob Nance, seconded by Milton Kluot. Any discussion? Not. We'll go ahead and vote. Mr. Dalton? Yes. Mr. Barrow? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Uh, no, I don't believe the variance meets okay, the letter of the code. That's, oh. Mr. Nance? Yes. Mr. Kluot? Yes. Mr. Sadley? Yes. Ms. Esnard? Yes. Ms. Zarazua Gray Dean? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Y'all have a good evening. Item 7, public hearing to recommend approval or denial to the parish council for the following private road to be accepted into the parish maintenance system. 7A, the Bluffs Avenue. Good evening. Um, I'm Diane Martin, president of the Bluffs Dissension Homeless Association. We appear before you on June 8th to request that Dissension Parish accept our street into the parish system for maintenance. At that time, I outlined to you the problems our subdivision has. The builder of our subdivision zoned the street as private, and they did not gate the single entrance, causing each homeowner to own that part of the street between their side property lines to the halfway point. <coughs> the Homeowners Association tried to assume responsibility for the maintenance of the street, but we find we're economically unable to do so. The other problem is that the builder failed to sign and record the restrictions for the second filing, so those homeowners in the second filing neither have to abide by the restrictions nor pay dues. Five of the 16 homeowners have signed a covenant, making them part of the Homeowners Association. Uh, our last appearance, uh, Mr. Marshawn told me that he thought that the uh, restrictions were recorded, but we made a diligent search, and they are not. And this is a huge part of our problem, that we have 11 homeowners who do not have to abide by our restrictions, nor pay dues, which is close to $2,000 a year that we don't have in our, in our treasury. Um, we also hired an abstractor to determine that the street is owned by each individual homeowner. She reviewed all the relevant documents and has determined that this is the case. At the June meeting, the commissioner suggested that we obtain petitions signed by each homeowner dedicating their part of the street to Ascension Parish. We have done so and we delivered to your staff the original position, petition signed by our homeowners. Of the 44 homes, one is under foreclosure. We talked to the lawyer for the mortgage company and the mortgage company, and neither would help us out in any way. We tried to locate the owner, but could not. We feel she has moved out of state. We can't find her. Uh, another house uh, was sold at tax sale in 2010, but the entity who bought this property in Omaha, Nebraska, told me that they hold a lien on the house and cannot uh, complete the sale for three years. We don't know who the mortgage company is. We attend again attempted to locate the original owner. We can't find him either. Um, backup documents for both of these situations are in the binder that I provided to your staff. Um, I checked again on Monday with the Ascension Parish and the uh, first house, the foreclosure is, on, it's, is still, it's not stopped. Why, I don't know. And um, the other one is not in foreclosure, the second one. Um, three of our the remaining homeowners uh, did not sign the petition. Therefore, we have 39 petitions signed by our homeowners. This is 87%, as well as a large majority. Uh, Monday, July 25, I was uh, notified by Jeff Lewenberger of your staff that Chairman Marshawn had requested that we amend our restrictions to take out the park uh, dealing with no parking on the street. Our restrictions require a 60% quorum of our homeowner members who are current with their dues to vote on all actions. We received over 60%. We have given your staff the amendment to our restrictions, which was recorded in Ascension Parish. I, I believe he provided you copies. Uh, we hope we have done what you've asked of us and now respectfully request your approval, contingent upon us completing the necessary repairs to the Bluffs Avenue. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Comments or questions from commissioners? Mr. Dalton. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to hear from our legal representative as to uh, 
where we stand legally as far as accepting a road if everybody doesn't donate the land. I mean, as long as it, I'm all for accepting it as long as the road meets the criteria for acceptance. But I'm concerned if we have people that have not signed or there's holes in all the transfers of the land over to the parish. So I would like to hear from our legal counsel as to can we accept this without 100% participation of the landowners or not? Well, before, before, and I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not as concerned about the, the homeowners association because I think that's covered. The concern really should be more with the financial institutions that come into play. Or are we going to get into a bind with them? Well, that's all part of the legal you know. question. So, um, because the homeowner association, when they, you know, there are certain members that, that have elected not to join the homeowners association, which we have no control over. Now, the homeowners association has met, and they've gotten over 60 percent, which I believe that's what your rules require for you to right. take any sort of action. So I think that would be covered. But we have the issue more so with the financial institutions, and if there is some, um, I don't know if there's a pending sale or there's a, uh, some, some other uh, issues with it, that, that seems to me, that would come into play more so than the, these other people. But that's so. my legal question. Can we, in fact, act, and can these people do that without the approval of their mortgage holder? And what about the ones that didn't sign or refused to sign? Can the parish take, can take possession of something they're not entitled to transfer? I mean, I think this is a valid legal question. I'd like to hear what our yeah. legal, legal person has to say. I would agree, Ms. Mann, if you, if you would, please. Certainly. I mean, there is an issue. We're not going to be getting the property fee title. In other words, we're not going to own the roadbed. Uh, there is something else called tacit dedication in which the parish can maintain the road. I believe it's for a period of two years or more, and then, then it's a public road. But again, we, don't, we wouldn't own to the center line of the roadbed from these, the various landowners who we couldn't get this information from. So it would be nice to have that. It's not... It's not required. It's not necessary, but you know. You I'm not argue, trying to put you, you on the spot. You could argue that it should be. Um, I'm just looking for a simple this, yes or no if that's time, possible. No. <laughs> you don't have to have that to have a road dedicated to you if the parish simply maintains it for that period of time. The requisite period being two years. Um, but again, we'll have to make it through that two-year hump before we can before the road will be dedicated to the parish absent the fee title and all 100% cooperation from the HOA and the owners. So, so we're not going to get the parish in trouble by accepting this road if it meets all the other criteria. <clears throat> right. I mean, it is a liability. I mean, to, to maintain a road is a liability, and it would be uh, a nice policy that we actually could own the roadbed, but could own the land underneath the roadbed instead of just maintaining the road. But... I recognize there's a lot of roads we don't there's own There's a lot land. to consider, but it, it, it would not be <coughs> illegal for you all to recommend to the council acceptance of the road. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Hang on just a minute, Mr. Dumas. Mr. Sadley, you have a question? Uh, if Mr. Dumas wants to follow, well, I'll he, yield. We were, I just was uh, going to ask, uh, ask legal a quick question. Well, go ahead, Commissioner Sadler. I appreciate it, Julio. Um, um, I have this, a secondary concern. I believe it was brought up last time, ma'am, and that was the issue of... Um, sort of the standoff that exists in the May 20 memo from the Planning Commission, um, to the Planning Commission from um, our DPW manager, Alan Bro. Um, in that memo, it's very brief, so I'll read it. The Department of Public Works is recommending acceptance of the Bluffs Avenue into the parish maintenance system. There's that word again, contingent upon the completion of minor repairs. You guys as homeowners, with even not 100% consent there yet, has contacted DPW and assured that the repairs will be done. Um, Department of Public Works, however, has informed the homeowners that the road will be taken into the system, um, will not be taken to the system prior to repairs not being complete. I've had a very stressful four weeks of my life, and I learned a lot about what it means to make decisions to contingent upon things, and particularly when we as a body have no ability to control that contingency. Uh, I would offer this example to you to consider. If I'm going 85 miles an hour, and I got this from an attorney, in a 70 mile an hour speed zone and the police officer gives me no ticket because he actually believes that the law is going to be changed in the future that's not a good situation there's no guarantee that this work will actually be done 
for us to make an approval now. It's a situation I've just experienced very vividly in my life, and I, I continue to have difficulties with these contingency type arrangements. So I guess my question, Mr. Chairman, would be, um, would you ask legal? Uh, are we up to snuff with this? Is there still laws saying that we cannot take this into the um, maintenance system if the repairs are not done ahead of time? Or can we really take things contingent upon something happening? I, I would think that uh, depending upon how the motion is made, the commission can uh, can go ahead and can require that the repairs be made before this would be moved to the parish council for acceptance. Am I? Am and likewise, I, the parish council could make could impose the same contingency on the on the road. So. And in fact, I would suggest if if that's the case that the the motion would be. And of course, I'm I'm simply recommending. I'm not saying that's what you have to do. But recommend that the uh, repairs be made and tested and inspected, and they must pass all pass all tests and inspections before it even hits the uh, goes in front of the council. Okay, so is the staff recommending that we bring this into the parish maintenance system? Yes or no? The, the recommendation in the memo comes from DPW. That, that they're the ones that went out and inspected the road and had the, dealt with the, uh, the the homeowners. We we haven't. I mean, th this staff hasn't made a recommendation one way or the other. Um, DPW is the one that ultimately maintains the road, so uh, it makes sense that they're, they're Technically, though, I don't believe DPW is supposed to be making that recommendation. They can say they find no fault with it, but they can't say, well, we recommend you accept this road. I think that's kind of overstepping their bounds just a little bit. We've never gotten that before. Thank you, thank you. We've got that they have, uh, it's just like with the, the drainage stuff Ms. from the drainage board, and they say we have no objection to it. They don't say we recommend you approve it, Mr. Chairman. That's that's why, that's why I, I labored the point of reading it, ma'am, into the into the record. That first sentence is problematic for me as well. The Department of Public Work is recommending acceptance, and if that's truly overstepping our bounds, it really puts the commissioners up here on the spot. And um, again, I'm tired of being put on the spot, <coughs> Mr. Dumas. You had a, uh, a question that you was wanting to put to legal. Yes. I, 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 um, if when you were explaining that two-year issue, um, if let's let's assume for a, sec a second that we move forward with a positive recommendation, the parish council takes action on this and accepts the road. Conceivably, the, the parish could re receive fee simple of everything but the few missing teeth on these parcels of land, which over a two-year period of time, the parish would own the road, they just wouldn't have to be simple to those lots, correct? They wouldn't own the road, they would just have the right to maintain it. Okay, they would have the right to maintain it, the and they wouldn't own those few little pieces. Right. Um, but that may not necessarily be harmful. No. Okay. In fact, many of our roads are just, there's a tacit dedication. The parish right. has maintained them for many years. The landowners on either side of the road own to the own own to the center line of the road and we simply maintain it. It's, it is a very common situation. All right. Mr. Chairman? It's, it's second issue. I mean, it, it would not be, it would not be um, outside of DPW's obligations when analyzing, reviewing these roads to feel whether or not the road is suitable for acceptance or not, whether it meets <coughs> the criteria or not. No, they're probably in the best position to make a recommendation because the recommendation actually came from the, uh, the ordinance was actually drafted by the public works director, Mr. Bob Turner, so from several years ago. So I think they're probably in the best position to determine if it meets that criteria. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Kluat. What if an accident <coughs> happened on that road and someone was to get killed? Who would be liable or responsible? Would the parish have any uh, obligations or would they be open to or would they be have any exposure or anything we, we have been involved in lawsuits uh, for accidents that have occurred on parish roads and there have been allegations of you know perhaps if they uh, a bush is in the right of way and hasn't been trimmed and it's uh, obstructing a stop sign so yes it is possible that there is some liability to the parish in accepting the road but I'm talking about by not actually owning it by just but just maintenance it Oh, no, I, I that would not be. Any, no. And I, too, am like uh, Commissioner Savage. I'm a little concerned about 
passing things pending something else happens. I, I think these people pay taxes and they need that road in the system. But again, I think we're putting the course before the horse. I think that the repair should be made and then come back and or come to this board, at least in my opinion, and then we accept it in the parish. Uh, I realize that people on that road pay taxes and that if the road fits and it's ready to be taken over and the parish say it can be taken over, then it should be taken over. But I too have a problem with passing something, pending on something else. And that was given to me by my attorney, like Mr. Sattler. We've been through a rough four weeks and uh, we've had a hard time with those kind of items. And we were advised that nothing should be done pending something else by two government agencies. Nothing should be done pending something else. That was the, the explanation that he gave me when I asked him the question. Um, Am I, I wrong, Mr. Commissioner Saddle? Uh, I, I believe, Mr. Clue, you're not only very accurate, but I've already spoken on this, so I don't want to be redundant. I, I, I'm reluctant to approve something contingent upon something else when I have zero power to control what that something else is, whether it will become a reality or not. Commissioners, I think everybody's aware that we each have some concerns, so let's let's stop being repetitious, okay? And and uh, we can sit here and play what if all night as far as accidents and anything else. The issue before us at this time, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to recommend to the parish council to accept this road into the parish maintenance system or not. Now, I've already stated I think that can be handled through uh, you can cover whatever conditions or whatever you want through the motion. Now, we st I still haven't, uh, or, or last month I had opened this up for public hearing, and I'm going to open it up again just in the event there are some people that want to come and address the uh, commission on this item. And I'd like to go ahead and move forward with that if I can. Uh, so at this time I am going to open up the public hearing. If there is anyone that wants to come up and address the commissioners on this item, please come up, sign in with the secretary, and you'll get you three minutes to speak. All right, no one wishing to speak from the public. Ms. James, you have a comment? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to echo your comments that <clears throat> this body is recommending to the council for acceptance. And so any uh, recommendations that you include, even though something is maybe not fixed exactly the way that it should be, has to be accepted by the council before it actually becomes accepted into the parish. And so you're not uh, making a decision here to accept the road, you're making a recommendation to the council. I just want to clear that up for some of the commissioners so that they understand um, that this is just a recommendation to the council. Well, thank you, Ms. James. There's no one else wishing to address the commission. And comments or questions from commissioners? What's the wish of the commission? I'd like to make a motion that we recommend uh, to the parish council that they accept the road and accept fee title to the portions of the road that they're able to obtain fee title to uh, with the condition that prior to acceptance that the homeowner association repair the road in a manner that is satisfactory to the Department of Public Works and it meets all testing criteria to demonstrate that it has complied with all of those requirements. I have a motion to recommend acceptance to the parish council with condition by Julio Dumas. Second. Second by Steve Barrow. Discussion? No discussion. At this time, we'll go ahead and vote. Mr. Dalton? Yes. Mr. Barrow? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Nance? No. Mr. Kluwat? No. Mr. Sadler? No. Mr. Esnar? Yes. Ms. Zarazua Gray Dean? Yes. That's three nays. Commissioners Nance, Cluot, and Satterley. Motion passes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Moving along, item eight public hearing to approve or deny the following historical site, uh, historical overlay zone site plan review. 
8A pre-development meeting for historical overlay zone site plan for homeless house plantation and gardens. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Mr. Sadley. Yes, I, I, wish, I wish to read uh, a prepared statement. I wish to recuse myself from item 8 on our agenda, the public hearing to approve or deny the pre-development plan for homeless house. <coughs> Although my attorney who has had more than 30 years experience with the ethics board law has assured me that it would not in any way be unethical for me to discuss motion or vote on this matter this evening, I have decided to err on the side of caution. In addition, although the Ascension Parish Sheriff's Office and District Attorney Ricky Babin have both cleared me of wrongdoing in separate and collaborative investigations, considering all the allegations made by the applicant of Homeless House during the last four weeks against myself and Commissioner Kluot, I am going to recuse myself in order to remove any further inkling of doubt that may remain that I could not, going forward, act unbiased in this matter. I trust the experience and wisdom of my fellow and remaining commissioners who will sit in judgment on this resubmitted application. While this matter is under discussion, Mr. Chairman, I am going to retire to our conference room as well. The reason for this is simple. I learned in my recent Capital Region Planning Commission ethics training held in Donaldsonville, commissioner training mandated by LA Act 859, that an optimal recusal, recusal is one in which an official leaves the room to avoid even the suspicion that he or she is participating by body language. I ask therefore, Mr. Chairman, that you call me back into the room when item 8 has been settled. I further request that this, my recusal statement, be entered in its entirety into the minutes of this meeting. Thank you. Mr. I have a Chairman. Copy here for staff. Mr. Chairman, I've, I've, I too excuse myself. Ms. Webb, you have the time that uh, Commissioner Sadley and Kluot left the room. They've rec formally recused themselves and they've left the conference room. Mr. Kelly, go ahead. I would like to thank this commission for giving me the opportunity to present my proposal for the improvements to um, be developed at Homeless House. Um, it's very exciting for me to uh, propose um, these developments. It includes uh, immediately a new restaurant, a bed and breakfast, and the steamboat overlook, as well as eight acres of new gardens. And then in the near future, and when I say near future, I suppose that means in about three or four years, depending on um, as the economy returns, um, an 88-room hotel, a convention center, ballroom, trademark, and another museum, which will give the history of the surveyors of the Mississippi River, um, including Lafon and all the other uh, well-known uh, surveyors. Uh, LaFont was one of the surveyors who surveyed Homeless House, Donaldsonville, Washington, D.C., and New York. And um, this will be a wonderful new addition to the property. If I can start, are, are you going to be able to put our designs up or I'm going to show them here? I put it on here, okay. Do I push something? Okay. Um, let's lower this down a little bit. This building that I'm pointing to here is the new restaurant, um, which is a ballroom duplicated basically off of an Irish ballroom in Ireland. Uh, Sixteen foot ceilings, great plaster ceilings on the inside, large crystal chandeliers. The exterior of the building that we're showing in this portion right here was actually designed by James Gallier in 1860 for Homeless House by John Burnside. We can't say if the building was ever built or not. The Historic New Orleans Collection, which is the Williams Research Center, um, presented these uh, blueprints and plans to us uh, to display. And when we saw how wonderful of a design it was and how well it fit in the property, we decided to use it as the design for the restaurant. You'll see this wing that sticks to the side right here. There's actually a huge oak tree. It was the Dr. George Crozat tree that actually comes down and covers that spot, so you would not see that area, and that's why there are no windows or anything like that. There's a little wing that sticks out on this side, which is where the restrooms would be on the property or for this building, and uh, there's large Satsuma trees which block that view. So the only portion that you would actually see is this portion here, which is an exact duplicate of the original plans. If you look in this section here, this large, this long yellow um, section is the actual ballroom. During the daytime, we would be providing ladies or gentlemen for that matter, uh, elegant high teas in the building. 
Um, currently in the area, basically only Windsor Court in New Orleans is offering this sort of a service. And we have lots of people in the area who have requested high tees. Um, and it would be served there from 2 to 5 o'clock. At 7 o'clock and later, seven nights a week, would be a more casual restaurant than our Latiel's Landing restaurant. And it would be offering things like steak, hamburgers, maybe meatloaf, but things that people would want on a daily basis. Um, we feel that this is necessary because of the bed and breakfast that we're building and because of the other developments. Um, our Latiel's Landing restaurant is a special event restaurant for weddings and um, birthdays and other celebrations. It's fairly pricey. It's open four nights a week, but we think we need the addition of this seven-night-a-week restaurant. You'll see it's connected to the Turtle Bar, which is the, an original Garcinier from 1828. And again, the connection to it, to the Turtle Bar, will not be seen in any way because of the way the oak tree sort of wraps the building and blocks it. In actuality, the only way you will ever see this building is if you were in front of our pavilion ballroom, because other than that, it will be completely enclosed by trees or large bushes. It will not be seen. Um, the next building here is the museum. Um, the hope, hopefully on this museum would be begun in about two years. This is a building designed by James Gallier also for John Burnside at Homer's House in 1860. It was the stable on the first floor and the second floor was where the uh, people who took care of the horses lived on the second floor. And again, it's a, an exact duplicate. This would be for the Mount Museum. The, um, the front of this building would face the parking lot. The rear of the building would have the exact same facade on it that would be overlooking the newest eight acres of gardens. Um, the hotel has previously been approved um, about five years ago, so I won't go into the details of that one, but that one's on hold right now, like I said, until the economy uh, returns. This Burnside um, Place building is the home of John Burnside, who owned Homer's house in, from 1858 until 1881 in his passing. And um, he's probably the most notable of the people who owned Homer's house, the way he lived, his wealth, um, the story we tell is all about him. So this building would actually, uh, it's kind of uh, it might not show as well as what it would actually, but this is actually a 40-story, not 40-story, 40 40-foot-tall 40 building, two levels. The upper floor is a thousand-room ballroom. The first floor is a trademark or convention center. We feel there's a need for this because there are always traveling shows. So the, Miss, the Smithsonian Institute always has a museum show touring around. They're always looking for places to bring their, their collections to, um, to be on tour. This could be used for antique auctions, art exhibits, anything like that. And um, we believe it would be a great addition. And again, this house was, um, when originally built on Washington Avenue in New Orleans, was a uh, 64,000 square foot house. Uh, it's kind of hard to believe somebody had a 64,000 square foot house, but it is the proper scale to go at Homer's house also. And it's, it would be more than, um, if I'm remembering correctly, it's about 1,200 feet from the house. And there are trees blocking the views in every way that uh, this would not be diminishing the size of the house or anything like that. Um, Let's see, those are the projects immediately. Then there would be the bed and breakfast buildings. Let me get to those. They're called the cottages at Homer's House. The cottages have either um, two room suites, three room suites, or four room suites. And some of the suites are two rooms, some of them are single, large rooms. Uh, they all have 10 foot ceilings. The design of these buildings are all from Uncle Sam Plantation. Uncle Sam had the largest collection of outbuildings of any plantation in Louisiana. I forget the actual number, but it numbered in the hundreds. And the designs were all fairly similar with the column placement on it. Can't really see that very well up there. Um, but this particular unit would have two, two units, and each would be two bedrooms inside. Um, this building is sort of the entrance or the reception area as guests would arrive. Buses would be able to ride in the portico in the front here. And it has the look of something that would have been built in the 1860s. I don't want to say it has a railroad terminal look, but it has a visitor center look 
um, that would be a greeting point. Um, breakfast would be served there. Uh, it would be a common meeting area for the guest. If you, if you can see this, which is difficult, this area along here is an alley of primarily oaks and magnolia, tree that, magnolia trees that developed on their own. It was the site, or it is the site of the original levee from Homeless House in 1810. It's only about four foot high, and there are two ditches on either side. The cottages will all be built facing this natural alley of oaks and magnolias. Um, it's quite a beautiful area. We, we really didn't know it existed until we kind of cleaned it out uh, about six months ago, and then it became the obvious location for these buildings. Um, This is sort of a better view of what the um, reception area would be. Um, this is detailing on what they would be. And again, most of them have uh, six columns, but some of them have eight columns. They would be raised cottages just the way they would have been at Uncle Sam Plantation. This is another design. It's a two-bedroom, larger room suites. And this one is a, a four-bedroom or four suites, but two have double rooms, two have single rooms. Um, and again, all of these are matching the designs of Uncle Sam Plantation. And uh, I think that covers the, the use and the design of all the buildings. The, the other project that, that we're um, doing here is the Steamboat Overlook. And the Steamboat Overlook Museum, which involves a federal grant from the federal government that I'm matching 20% of the proceeds to, um, is built on the Batcher of the river. Uh, its design is, well, this would be the, the side view of it. Um, the stairway and elevator system is in a little park area next to River Road, next to our parking lot. And, um, it's sort of shaped like the, um, the water cisterns, but taller, uh, to sort of fit in historically into the property so it wouldn't look like something contemporary or anything like that. And then the bridge that goes across over River Road into the levee top, top would be uh, something that would have been typical going across the, the, um, the roadways at the time at a war facility. Um, I don't think we, the, des the design of what is built on the Batcher, I don't believe is part of the historic overlay, so I won't go into the details of that. Um, but there will be also a, um, a museum, it's about a 6,000 square foot museum on the river with windows overlooking the river, an amphitheater, and a mock up of a uh, steamboat. Um, it's not a real one because we have to build it on pilings. Nothing in this grant is allowed to be of floating nature. I would hope to bring steamboats here and have steamboats per permanently docked here that guests could go on and, and see the exhibits and things like that, but that's not a definite quite yet. Um, I think that covers all the design things for the, for the buildings on the site itself. Comments or questions from commissioners? If there are no comments or questions from commissioners, we'll go ahead and we'll open up the... Uh, Public comment period on this item. Anyone wishing to come up and address the commission on this item, please come up, sign in with the secretary, and you'll get you three minutes to speak. Ms. Galvich, you would sign Go ahead. Good evening, commissioners. The property in question has both a PUD overlay and a historical overlay. In 2006, the applicant considered a small planned unit development for the property, but a submittal was never made. The PUD overlay requires any development over three acres to be a PUD. The current project is well over three acres. An email of May 28th from the applicant to Councilman Shake Snyder discusses the possibility of, quote, getting rid unquote, of the historical overlay. This option was not pursued because, quote, the intent of the expansion is to financially support the historic structure, end quote. The project in question does meet the historical overlay code. In a June 30th email from Planning Director Ricky Compton to Councilman Shake Snyder and copy to Lance Brock, Lindsay Manda, Tommy Martinez, and Mike Marchand about this application, 
Mr. Compton states, quote, in order to facilitate the timely approval of the Hummus House project, we feel it would be beneficial if the council requested a public hearing before the Zoning Commission at the August Zoning Commission meeting on the following development code revision, end quote. The suggested revision is to exempt the PUD overlay from historical sites with a recommended motion are included in the body of the email and were in fact passed at the council meeting last Thursday, August 4th. In a July 18th email from Mr. Compton to advocate reporter David Mitchell, the planning director states the PUD overlay on this property, quote, never occurred to us, end quote, when the review process began. This is the same planning director who cleaned up the code last year and placed the PUD overlay at 172838 for council approval into our ordinances. The code is not broken as the parish president stated last Thursday at the parish council meeting. It is a bad ordinance for all citizens in districts 1, 2, and 3. It is clear that Mr. Compton made every effort as stated by the applicant in a July 15th advocate article to quote, work on getting the council to create that exception, end quote. Even to the point of writing the recommended motion in his June 30th email to Councilman Shake Snyder. These actions are truly questionable. Documentation suggests that planning staff and at least one councilman are attempting to circumvent current code. The staff's recommendations is special treatment. What is good for one is good for all. This PUD overlay hurts every property owner under it. The repeal of the entire PUD overlay, which is on your next agenda, is the shortest timeline and the best solution for this applicant and all property owners. Please place these comments along with the previously mentioned emails into the public, public record. Thank you. Thank you. Who signed up next, Ricky? I thought I saw two people sign up. My name is Patty Boudreau. I live in District Street, <clears throat> excuse me, I live in District 3 where this project is being proposed. I am offended that this parish is treating this project differently when all the people in this district would like the same treatment. <coughs> There's not a problem with the project. I have no problem with the project if that's what they want to do. The only thing I ask is that we all be treated equally, the people as well as them. Thank you. Thank you. Greg DePlessis. Thank you all. <coughs> Fabulous project. If, if what he just displayed and showed to everybody, a uh, wonderful project. I want to be perfectly clear. I am not here tonight in opposition of this project. But I think it's clear by now to everybody involved in this issue that's been going on for quite some months now, there is clearly a problem with the law. It's not a problem with the project. There's a, pro there's a problem with the law. It's a bad law. We were told almost a year ago at the Dara public meeting that the PUD overlay in the Dara area, District 3, would be removed. I, I was at the meeting. I heard Councilman Adrian Thompson make that statement. I watched Mr. Ricky Compton walk up to the map and say, if the people in Dara don't want this, we'll take it off of District 3. It's almost a year. The law still there. No action has been taken to remove the overlay ordinance and now it's stopping a multi-million dollar project that everybody that I've talked to agrees is a wonderful project. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a bad law. The people have been asking for almost a year to abolish the law. I strongly urge you do not approve a project subject to the changing of a law. That's been stated earlier. Be very careful. I think you have an opportunity at your next meeting, at the zoning meeting, to take a better approach at making this project possible, and that is <coughs> abolish the PUD overlays wherever they exist. It's a bad law. The people want it to go away. Make it go away, then revisit this project and, and let the man uh, do this wonderful project. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I come before you tonight. Also, I'd like to start off by saying I'm not opposed to this uh, development. I think it's a great project that Mr. Kelly's come up with. I was at the council meeting in Donaldsonville when he displayed his project. I've got on a, on the uh, parish website and looked at his proposal, and I like it. I like what I see. The part that uh, kind of frustrated me, I too saw a copy of the letter that came from the parish office from Mr. Crompton that was dated on 630 that he copied to Mr. Martinez, Mr. Brock, Ms. Manda, and Mr. Marshall to facilitate timely approval on a homeless house project. Uh, I heard our parish president state before that he'd like to run his office with transparency and justice for all. And it leads me to wonder, does one's financial status allow the parish government to change the laws or the ordinances. The way I see it, the issue is not the project, it's the put overlay that's stopping him, just like it's stopping the residents from doing what they want on their property. I urge you tonight to go ahead and send a proposal to the council to remove the put overlay that's affecting this project and residents in the area also. And I'd also like to urge our parish president, stand up and send a recommendation to the council. Put your money where your mouth is at. Get up there and remove the PUD overlay and show that you're, you have integrity and you're trying to run your office with integrity and transparency. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I just want to clarify something that uh, this gentleman just commented on. It's not the administration's role to uh, put forth laws. It is the legislative body, and it should come from the Zoning Commission. So any laws that should be generated to change zoning issues has to come from the Zoning Commission first. So I just want to clarify that. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, as everybody said, this is a great project, and uh, Mr. Kelly did a, a, it's got a great project going. It's a great historical project. It's a great uh, recreational entertainment project for this parish. And you have the opportunity to now to not delay Mr. Kelly any further. Whether the put ordinance is right or wrong, don't stop Mr. Kelly, punish Mr. McKelly for what's wrong with the law. You have an opportunity now to approve this tonight and let him move forward with his project. Thank you. Mr. Aguilar, let me clarify something for you. We haven't held Mr. Kelly up. We haven't stopped him. So please don't come in here making accusations against the commission about holding I, I him up. I didn't make an accusation at all, Mr. Morshan. You I'm made a comment that we've holding him up. You asked us not to no, hold I, him I, up. I, We're I, not holding him up. So I'm just clarifying for you. I'm, Thank I'm, you. I'm just asking Thank you not you. to hold him up any further, that you can approve this tonight. We haven't held him we up. We haven't held him up. I'm not saying you have. I never said you did. I'm saying don't hold him up anymore. You have opportunity tonight to, to move right. forward. How I'm can we not right. hold him up anymore if we haven't held him up? <laughs> Mr. Chair, I think this is semantics. I think he, he meant to. Mr. Dumas, moved. we got a speaker that wants to go ahead and address the commission. Please allow her to. My name is Trudy Burnett, and I am a lifelong member of Ascension Parish, namely District 3. I am very offended that I cannot get anything changed, but Mr. Kelly has money, so he may be able to get something changed. I think things should be one for all, all for one. What's good for the goose? It's good for the gander. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else signed up, Mr. Compton? All right, then the public comment period is closed on this item. Ms. Kelly, if you like, you can come up and uh, rebut the comments made. Hopefully I can clarify something because people think I might be wealthy and I can buy my way through. That has not occurred. I simply filed an application for a permit and this has all occurred. The problem with this is, is the, ho the three plantations, Homus House, Hermitage, and Bocage Plantation, are controlled by historic overlay. The law that was passed to put this PUD overlay was not supposed to cover these plantations. They conflict each other. They, they, the law was never supposed to cover both. When someone on the Planning Commission became aware that Homus House was more than three acres, it was alerted to the Planning Commission. They presented it to, to me as there's a conflict here and we're going to solve it. 
It's going to take a little time to solve it. But this overlay was never meant for the plantations. The plantations have all sorts of extra restrictions that are extremely costly that I'm willing to live by. But it's not that I'm asking for special privileges. The law was a bit of a mistake. No one realized when they put this overlay law that it covered these three historic sites that are totally covered by another historic overlay. A, if I tried to apply for a PUD on Homus House property, it simply wouldn't work. The PUD is when you're doing a development and you're, sub you're subdividing the property and doing different things, and you're showing what you're going to do on the property for the next 10 or 15 years without changes. That doesn't work with Homus House. Um, I'm not selling off parcels of, the pro parcels of the property. I'm not subdividing anything. And it just, I, it, my, when I attempted to do a PUD several years ago, it was determined by the engineers, the attorneys, and myself that we couldn't meet the requirements of a PUD simply because the PUD wasn't designed for a site like Gomez House that is a large um, historic site. I, I don't know how to say it anything. I'm not asking for special privileges. My understanding is when this meeting was up for a month ago, it was thought that we could get a conditional approval that there would be an exemption for the historical sites. And all I was trying to do, and all I'm trying to do today, is to get allowance or get approval for my designs so that I can start the process to get my architects and engineers going so construction can start. The Steamboat Overlook, which is a seven and a half million dollar project, um, requires pilings to be placed on the river side of the levee. As we all know, the river goes up and down seasonally, and usually in February, the water is too high to put pilings. I need to put pilings in beginning in mid-October in order that I can save nine months of construction time. Once the water starts going up in the river, and these are huge concrete pilings, they've been approved by the Corps of Engineers and, and, and the Lake Pontchartrain Levee District. Everyone else has given the approval. The only problem we have right now is we have to get the approval of these pro other projects, which include the parking lot, in order for me to be allowed to do the Steamboat Museum. If we delay this process, we will lose the federal grant. And I think that would be a huge mistake. This scenic byway grant is given by the Department of Transportation. They've been given this grant for approximately 55 years. This is the largest grant ever given to one single project. The state of California got a grant that was, uh, if I'm remembering right, about $5 million, but that money was dispersed to 14 different projects. We have a hugely unique opportunity here to build something of national um, merit to bring many tourists to this area to learn about the folklore, the music, and the commerce of the river. It's sort of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I think we were so lucky to get this opportunity. Um, I'm donating the property. I'm donating my close to $2 million in the development. The federal government's putting the match. And all I'm asking for is for me to get this approval so that we won't lose this grant. I mean, it's just that simple. It, it's not, I'm not asking for special favors. The, PUD overlay should not be overlapping with the historic overlay. I realize it was a mistake, but it happened. And I don't think it was anyone's intentional fault. It was just a mistake. Any questions? Comments or questions from commissioners? If there's no comments or questions from commissioners, what's the wish of the commission? Mr. Chair. Mr. Dumas. If I may. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about preferential treatment and what have you, and I want to make it very clear that um, uh, some of us made a mistake in the past with Bocage by approving it without applying this, this provision of the ordinance. Uh, some of us read the ordinance and thought, nope, that wasn't the intent. This isn't a development as we traditionally do it, and consciously made the decision that it wasn't applicable. We've since then learned that, well, Maybe that decision wasn't accurate. Um, point is, is that we've set a precedent when we did Bocage, um, whether we like it or not. I think that now that we're aware of the provision of the code, uh, it would be reasonable for for us to have this condition of approval. It would be we would be flawed <coughs> if we didn't put that condition of approval and allowed this this petition to move forward concurrently. Now, doing that 
it's not something that we would do for him uniquely. We've done that for many, many other applicants that have come here before the Planning Commission and approved things subject to conditions of approval. Excuse me, Mr. Mr. Dumas. Do you have a motion? Are you going to yes, make a I motion? Yes, I do. I'd like you to. Uh, well, I, asked I would what's appreciate the, wish of the, the opportunity. No, to have I, I, I gave you the opportunity when I said comments or questions from commissioners, and you said nothing. And I said, "What's the wish of the commission?" And you started going ahead and commenting. All right. So I will make a motion to approve the plan contingent upon the parish council modifying the PUD, SPD, TND overlay district in a matter in one of the matters, or in at least one of the matters uh, are recommended by staff. I have a motion to approve with condition by Julio Dumas. Second. Second by Steve Barrow. Discussion? Uh, yeah, that, I think that's a little vague. Uh, th they made one of the, they just asked for one of the three and this motion doesn't say which one of the three no and i my motion says any one of those three would satisfy the letter of the law for this particular application in this during the next hearing we're going to take at least one of these opportunities and make a recommendation to the parish council so i'm just i'm just saying just do one of them parish council i don't i don't i'd like i mean to. i would prefer one over the other but i i would rather i just soon just not not do it on this application and address it on the next one well in that case i'm gonna have to offer a substitute motion that we, that we deny this application until that it uh, the law is changed or the ordinance is changed Second. have a motion a substitute motion to deny uh the proposal if i may by would, excuse me substitute mo made by Commissioner Bob Nance, second by Commissioner Susanna Zarazua Gray Dean. If I may, which, you know, I'd like to ask Commissioner Vance, which one of these would you prefer? Uh, the, the first one, but it, it's going to be taken care of, hopefully, in, the, in our zoning meeting. Okay, so, I mean, if, if, I, if I amend the motion to include that one specifically, would you be satisfied? No, not really. I, I, I think we're getting the cart before the horse. Uh, let right. we we have a, uh, this coming up in the zoning meeting, and we're going to send something to the council. I feel like we will, and if the council removes it, then he'll be good to go. Well, not if you deny the application. The the council had an opportunity to get rid of the PUD ordinance back early spring, and that we wouldn't even. Get it. We wouldn't be having this conversation, but strategic planning is sitting on it, so I don't know what they're going to do. That's not under our purview. Well, m my motion still stands. All right. Is there any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Dalton. I feel like this particular applicant, <clears throat> because of some quirks in the law and some problems that are in existence with the laws, the PUD and the historical overlay, and and the others, I feel like this guy's being unfairly penalized, and I think we should take that into consideration. Uh, that this the situation with the laws, with the historical overlay, the PUD, and all of those, they're not of this applicant's making. So that was my comment. Okay. Any other discussion? Then we'll go with. Uh, no, sir. Right now is the time for the commission. We're getting ready to go ahead and vote. We'll vote on the substitute motion uh, to deny first. Commissioner Dalton? No. Commissioner Barrow? No. Commissioner Dumas? No. Commissioner Nance? Yeah. <coughs> yes. Commissioner Esnar? Yes. Commissioner Zarazua Gray Dean? Yes. Tie vote. Chairman votes yes. Get Commissioner Satterley and Cluot back in here. We'll move on to the next item on our agenda.
Item 9, public hearing to recommend approval or denial to the parish council for the following ordinance, sign requirements for a subdivision public notice. Mr. Kluart, coming from your uh, recommendation, coming from your uh, subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ben's, I was out last month on some bi uh, business, and you chaired it for me. I'd appreciate it if you would, would handle this for me. Uh, that's why I sent that detailed report to you. I so got you it. Go ahead and take care of it. Do you I got it right here. Well, I got it right here. Go ahead and the okay. Had, uh, the commission, as far as I can see, has had an uh, optimum amount of time to go ahead and review it. So. Okay. Well, then, what is the wish of the commission? Well, we have to open the public <laughs> hearing first. Okay, you go ahead. Fire away. Fire away, Mr. Okay. Mr. Is, there any, uh, is there any comments or questions from commissioners on this item? Not, and we'll go ahead and open up the public hearing. Anyone wishing to come up and address the commission on this item, please come up, sign it with the secretary, and you'll get you three minutes to speak. No one wishing to speak. Public comment period on this item is closed. Comments or questions from, from the commission? All right, what's the wish of the commission? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve this uh, Send a, send a recommendation to the parish, the parish council. council. Right. Second. Have a motion by Commissioner Milton Cluot to send the, uh, send this recommendation forward to the parish council. Seconded by Commissioner Bob Nance. Is there a uh, discussion? All right. There's no discussion. We'll go ahead and vote. Commissioner Dalton. Yes. Commissioner Barrow. Yes. Commissioner Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Nance. Yes. Commissioner Kluot. Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Sadley. Yes. Commissioner Esnard. Yes. Commissioner Zarazua Gradine. Yes. Motion passes. Mr. Compton, this will be on the commission of the council's uh, next agenda for review, correct? Okay, because I mean, there's some stuff that you've been bringing to them for simply strictly for review. So, this isn't a map amendment, this is an ordinance, so it's just for introduction and then public hearing. Okay. Item 10, the subcommittee report. Mr. Kluot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before us, uh, we had several things, and one of the things that we're bringing before this commission tonight is. Uh, the uh, appeals process. Uh, I uh, had one of a fellow commissioner that uh, worked on this, and uh, I'm, I'm going to take a lame duck on this and let him kind of explain a little bit to it about it because uh, I he came to the con he came to the uh, he came to the subcommittee and presented it to us. So, uh, Commissioner Morshon, would you explain it, sir? It's not that much to explain. It just uh, clarifies the. Uh Section 17492 in regards to the appeals procedure. Is there any uh, comments or questions from commissioners? Mr. Chair. Mr. Dumas. Uh, if I read this properly, it seems to me like what we're, what we're now requiring an applicant to do is once we deny them, they now have to come back to us before they can go to the appeals board. No, that, that's, that's the procedure as it stands already. That's already the procedure. They come back to see us, and when we if, if we deny them a second time, then they go see the appeals board. I, I guess it just seems to me like that. That's onerous. That what we ought to do is we ought to clean this up and streamline it so that once we take action of it, they need to move forward with the appeal process and 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 appeal it either to the appeals board or to court. I mean, for no, them to come back to us, it seems to me like a double jeopardy of law. Well, Mr. Dumas, that's that's the way it's been since you've been sitting on the commission. There was no problem with it before. Well, but but here we are proposing to quote clarify it. And what I'm suggesting to you is, is that instead instead of taking it this direction, should we not take it in another direction? In direction being that we simplify it. Well, that that's actually some discussion. It should have taken place in the subcommittee meeting, but it wasn't. It didn't take place. You That's know, correct. This, this was brought through subcommittee. All this was worked out, and is, you know it should have been that, that that suggestion should have been made during the subcommittee, but it wasn't. So uh, you know tonight all we're doing is going ahead and voting whether or not to hold a public hearing on this. That's it. 
Any other comments or questions yes, from commissioners? All right. What's the wish of the commission? I'd like to make a motion that we hold a public hearing on this uh, particular item. I have a motion to hold a public hearing at next month's uh, regularly scheduled planning commission meeting by Milton Kluot. Second. Second by Commissioner Dan Sadley. Discussion? There's no discussion, and we'll go ahead and vote. Commissioner Dalton? Yes. Commissioner Barrow? Yes. Commissioner Dumas? No. Commissioner uh, Nance? Yes. Commissioner uh, Kluot? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Sadler? Yes. Commissioner Esnard? Yes. Commissioner Zarazua Gray Dean? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, item 11 on our agenda, new business. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, excuse me, Mr. Kluot. Uh, there you I, I, go. We, you, we, you're stepping, you're stepping well, on the usually button. Usually we make the commission report before okay. we. But go I'm going to let you slide this time, partner. Uh, Again, I'll repeat, I was not at the, um, at the last uh, subcommittee meeting, and uh, um, even though the chairman sent me the package, I've been uh, very, very tied up for the last several uh, weeks, and uh, I have not been able to get with Mr. Marshall, and I'm going to go ahead at this time and uh, say that we're going to go ahead and cancel this, this month's uh, subdivision ordinance committee, and I will be getting with Mr. Marshall, Chairman Marshall, to bring myself up more on the details that took place in last month's meeting. And I sure would appreciate everybody uh, letting me have that opportunity to do that. Being out of town, Mr. Marshall, Chairman Marshall, chaired, our, chaired my committee, and uh, I appreciate it, uh, Chairman Marshall. And the next meeting will be at DPW on September the 21st at 5 p.m. And uh, I, I appreciate it. Thank you all very much. That's all I have, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Kluot. So once again, there will not be a subdivision ordinance committee meeting uh, for the month of August. Item 11, new business. Any items of new business? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Kluot. Uh, I have been uh, getting several calls in relation to the master plan. It may be a little bit early, and I'm going to ask this commission to give us a little input. But I'd like to see if we start the process of uh, putting together a committee to start uh, doing what the parish council asked us to do, and that's uh, look at uh, hiring a consultant. I know it's pretty early because uh, I submitted a, a budget to uh, President uh, Martinez, and I haven't heard back from him, but I did He speak to him not too long after I gave him the budget, but he just gave me informal information that he would be taking it up, but I haven't heard anything back since then. And I submitted it to him on the 6th, 18th of 2011. And he's been, I imagine, I can't speak for him, but I imagine he's been busy. And he just hadn't gotten back to him. So I would like to see that the master plan process start. We're getting in, we'll be hitting into, uh, we're hitting in, into August, September, and it's toward the end of the year. And uh, I think the citizens of this parish is going to want us to start this master plan at the first of the year. Uh, we get new financing and, and hire, start looking at hiring a local consultant to help us with this. Uh, according to the parish council's request, whenever uh, Chris uh, made the, uh, the motion to deny and, and send it back to us, that's all I have. All right. I don't know if this commission can uh, can go ahead and do that. We'll probably have to meet as the uh, master plan subcommittee in order to uh, to move on that. Whatever. Uh, Miss James was here. We could ask her what the uh, to see about getting with the parish president to get you some get some feedback on the budget uh, all right well any other items of new business to be brought before the Commission no then we'll move along I'll uh, item 12 I'll entertain a motion to adjourn motion motion by uh, Commissioner Kluwat seconded by Commissioner Nance any ob uh, objection or discussion motion passes and we will uh, we're adjourned and we will reconvene as a zoning Commission in 10 minutes